I'm joined here now with Evan Kenny, and today we are talking NBA playoffs. Currently in the second round, but one team has just clinched their spot in the conference finals, and that is the Phoenix Suns, who, even though this year they were the second seed, they were kind of looked at as the underdogs. Yeah, 100% Jasmine. I mean, you know, from the very beginning of the season, I think it's safe to say uh, a lot of people looked at them as the underdog. I mean, you know, we saw it in last year's NBA playoff bubble. They went 8-0, and unfortunately, didn't qualify for playoffs, but that really kick-started the success that we're seeing from that team now. I mean, in the regular season this past year, they were one win off of being the number one team in the entire NBA, yet you still go into a first-round playoff matchup against LeBron James and the LA Lakers, and yes, they were looked at as the underdog, but now, you know, we've seen they've been rolling, their offenses really clicking, you know, guys like DeAndre Ayton, who might not have been contributing as much in past years, are really starting to catch up. And then, I mean, Jasmine, what else can you say? Chris Paul and Devin Booker have been absolutely insane. I mean, in that final game versus Denver in the sweep there, Devin Booker dropped 34, while Chris Paul dropped 37. I mean, when you need your stars to be stars, uh, these guys are really, you know, fulfilling that role there. And this was the first time the Phoenix Suns have reached the conference finals since 2010, and they haven't actually reached the NBA finals since the 90s, so it'll be a bit different matchup that we will see, but this game was kind of met with some controversy as Nikola Jokic was actually ejected for a flagrant two foul with four minutes to go in the third quarter. Now, a lot of people are wondering, will the, in, will the um, outcome have changed if Nikola Jokic hadn't been ejected? So there is some controversy surrounding that. You know, Jasmine, I understand where that's coming from. I don't know if the outcome necessarily would have changed. They were down by a handful of points there, and, and it seemed like Phoenix was really starting to roll there. But, you know, just looking at it from Jokic's side, the joker there, it, it did not seem like an intentional or a dirty play there. You know, he was trying to fire his team up, get a big steal, or maybe even draw a hard foul, but nothing, you know, intentionally looking to hurt, um, you know, the player there on the sun. So, I mean, it, it's more of just a tough scenario. Would it have changed the game? I don't think so, but you still, you know, you don't love to see that, you know, in this final game there. And another thing that might have played a difference into the Denver Nuggets playoff run was the injury of Jamal Murray, which has actually led to a lot of teams. They have seen injuries throughout this playoffs, including Kyrie Irving, James Harden, just to name a few. So this playoff run really shows that your team needs to have depth in order to really make it far in the playoffs. Yeah, 100% Jasmine. I mean, you already mentioned it. James Harden there was hurt in, in game one where the Nets played Milwaukee there. Uh, Kyrie Irving leaves in game four there. So, you know, Kevin Durant is now taking a huge load uh, on his shoulders. But, you know, not just when you look at the Brooklyn Nets, other teams are also facing these injuries. Danny Green, a great 3 and D guy for the Philadelphia 76ers there is now injured. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, you know, all-star for the Utah Jazz, will be missing, you know, a, possibly a couple of games here um, and Mike Connolly you know another guy for the Utah Jazz he missed game three there uh, and they ended up losing it to the Clippers so injuries obviously play a huge role it could be a make or break for any team here but Jasmine you know this really will show where the depth where the bench for different teams stands at I mean you look at championship teams in the past LA Lakers last year they had a guy like Alex Caruso you know who was huge coming off the bench there uh, you know, Toronto Raptors a couple years before that, obviously they had the bench mob. So, you know, the recipe for success is having depth and having a good bench. Now we'll really see from some of these top teams if they have that. And I think this NBA playoffs, like you said, has really shown the depth of certain teams. And that is kind of transitioning into the next generation of the NBA and what it might look like. You know, we're seeing teams like the Hawks making the second round where we haven't really seen them be good in a few years. The Jazz have been doing great, but now they're really starting to get higher, as well as the Knicks, which we know have all not been that great throughout the past few years. So it's nice for them to finally make the playoffs and maybe even be a contender in the coming years. And another one of of those teams is the Hawks where we're seeing star player Trey Young really flourish. Yeah, Trey Young has really come out, you know, into his own. He's 
uh, solidified himself as one of the elite players uh, in the NBA throughout these playoffs. He's averaging 28.8 points per game and 9.8 assists per game. These are almost career high totals uh, for him. And this is his first playoff run. I mean, you know, not only is he having this individual success, but obviously Jasmine, you know, he's in the second round. He had a hard fought battle there with the New York Knicks and was able to win that one. So, you know, not only is he having individual success, but just the play uh, for himself is making the team around him better. You know, we, we could bring up some different guys too, Luka Doncic, uh, you know, a, a handful of other guys, John Morant, who, who while they've had individual success, their teams haven't done as well. But for Trey Young, you know, him being excellent has, has pushed his team to excellence. And this playoff run will certainly have a different outcome that we've seen in the past few years, such as LeBron James and Steph Curry. Neither of those players are in the finals since 2010, which if you think about it, that's a pretty long time and a pretty successful run for both of those players. But we are really seeing the NBA changing as well as maybe our classic teams, such as the Lakers and Warriors and Celtics and so on, haven't really been the star team. So it'll be nice to see a new champion this year. But thank you so much for your time, Evan. Yeah, thank you, Jasmine, and you're right. It should be exciting moving forward.